to a fan pulley hub here. Now it fits over a little hub there, like so. You've got to be careful not to drop it because it's a very expensive bit. We then put it on the pillar drill because I need to drill the holes through the fan itself and into the pulley hub as well to bolt it all together with four bolts. There you go, fans all bolted up. That goes onto the bottom of the secondary drive shaft here, but before that goes on, I have to put another pulley up there which will have the belt which will eventually drive through other belts, the main tail rotor at the back. So, this just goes, slots up there like that, and it's got one bolt through, which is a bit of a tight fit. There we go, that's on in the right position and then making sure this is the right way up shiny surface to the top this should just slide on like so for now I'm just going to hold this on by screwing in little allen key bolts so there we go one fan it's terribly drafty in there The tail rotor at the back is driven by a system of belts and pulleys that come from the secondary drive unit and then through two other pulleys that are within the tail boom and they're at slightly different angles so they can take a horizontal drive from the secondary drive system near the engine through to a vertical drive where the tail rotor is. So it's quite a simple but very clever little device. Now I've already put one pulley in and I've got one more to do and you can see here where the alignment of that pulley is with the bulkhead so you can see that it's on an angle. The belt itself looks as though it's not strong enough to run the fan in your average family saloon, but it is incredibly strong. It's made of stuff called aramid fibre, which unlike normal belts, when it gets hot it actually tightens rather than slackens. So your life is in the hands of this belt. If it had hands, of course, which it hasn't, because it's a belt. People have hands, belts don't. The pulley fixes onto the bulkhead in here, and fortunately in the tail boom there is an access panel. The scissors just slip into a bracket with a couple of holes in that's already fixed to the bulkhead and then there are just a couple of bolts, one there, it's difficult. Right, just tighten those up and then I can take the pulley out. That is the end of that sequence. The pulley's out, here's the belt, it goes onto the bottom of the two slots in the pulley like so, but I need to feed up first the belt down to the end. The belt coming from the tail rotor end needs to be in the top groove of this pulley like so and then the whole lot needs to slide into the scissors and then one big bolt through the whole lot like that. Right, well this axle bolt for the pulley needs to be done up completely tight and then I can attach the belt to the secondary drive. So, uh, the belt should just pull it taut, it should just slip on to there without having to stretch it or anything. Now, does that move the tail rotor? Yes, indeed! The magic of science! This is the main workings of the clutch, which there's quite a lot of assembly work to do on its bracketry, but it will fit in here, something like that, which means when the clutch is engaged, this arm will move this big pulley here out sideways, like so, which will tension the belts, and that's controlled with a rod lever that goes through into the cockpit so it's a bit of a bench job okay please take a long hard look at this plan and when you've worked out what it's all about could you let me know this is a very complex looking drawing but if you get rid of all the 
kind of superficial stuff you don't need to know about and concentrate on the middle. You can see there's the top of the pulley looking down on it. And this is the main frame it sits in. That's the arm that goes to its hinge point there. And then we've then got this connector here, a bracket there, and then this that continues here is actually the lever that goes into the cockpit, which is there. So you can kind of ignore everything else on there for the moment. And the first job is to properly attach the pulley to this arm here, which is number 21, which is the pulley arm weldment, E279010. <laughs> Next up is preparing the clutch tube weldment, which is this bit. We've got some springs to go in there. This will slide in there like that. Well, Pete, mate, yep. can you just drop that rivet in? All right, mind your nails. Yeah. Mind, just use the base of your thumb. Okay. Yeah. Sorted, and there you can see it just acts as a stop, a backstop for the piston. But the piston is free to move and down like that. Right, that's the pulley and its arm attached so it can swing there and engage the pulley onto the belt. Next, the other clutch arm which has one bolt underneath and then another bolt in the top like so and you're beginning to get the idea. When it's engaged this over centre arm here locks into place and pushes this pulley right out to tension the main belts. But when you take it off, what is very obvious is the main belts are far too slack. So I've already tensioned up the drive belts that go to the tail rotor and the same principle is used to tension these main belts. You need a gauge, a bit of wire and a little piece of aluminium cut to half an inch on the end of a piece of string. All will become very clear in two seconds. The adjustment for the belts is done down here on this bolt. As you screw this in, it pushes the top of the engine towards the front of the aircraft, which tensions the belts. Okay, that's tightening up a bit. So let's see whether we're anywhere near the tension we need. So what we do is get your bit of wire, hook that underneath the bottom belt, Attach the gauge to the other end of the wire and then this is effectively your depth gauge, your marker gauge, because the belts are at the right tension. When you're pulling seven pounds on here, the belt should move out of position the half inch width of this little piece of aluminium. So we've got seven on there and you keep fiddling about until you get it right. Over here is where the oil bath will go. And this main tooth cog will sit in there. And the other one that sits on top of there for the other end of the chain will be inside here. And it is to bathe and lubricate the chain. It's got to contain oil. But no ordinary oil, because it's a mixture of good high quality engine oil mixed with this very gloopy stuff that is very like treacle, almost good enough to have on your porridge in the morning. And that thickens it up nicely. So it's not a huge amount of oil goes in this bath. And actually one of the jobs first thing in the morning when you've got the helicopter complete is you tip the helicopter back a little bit so all the oil in the bath runs back down to coat the small cog and that then will get all the oil on the chain so when you start running up you've got the whole thing lubricated. First job on the bath itself is to cut two holes, one for the primary shaft, one for the secondary shaft. I'm doing here is creating a little access hole where we'll end up putting in this link pin here for the chain. That'll go up through that hole. So it's only a little hole, 
but the next bit of kit to open up the slot is this thing, which is a step drill. It means you can start with a pilot hole and then just open it up to whatever size you want in one 